Hey guys, it's Amalia and Chava. And today we are coming at you with some seminary confessions. Since this year we are both in Yer Tashem, um, if all goes correct with Corona, going to be in seminary. A woman was wearing white on tubav, and I asked her if it was a minhag to wear white on tubav, and the woman said, no, but we have a minhag to get, give people money for food. So she gave us 20 shekel, and we bought ice cream. That's a nice story. That's not like a confession. It's nice. I mean, it's a nice story, but like, I feel like they're giving you money for like food. So like, you don't need food, you know, but I guess like, you're not a, somewhat, you weren't like, you bought ice cream. Like clearly you're not a needy person. No, is it a minhag to give to needy people or just a minhag to like spread the joy? I don't know. I guess they didn't seem like needy people. So she was just like spreading the joy and gave him 20 shaka. But nice free ice cream. Basically. But I think it is a minhag to wear white on Tubav. Well, this woman said she. I mean, I no, it's not a mid hug, but that's what Tubov was. It was going in a field wearing your white, your friend's white dress, and <laughs> really, I don't even, I don't even know anything about. I listened Tubov. to I one like year about Tubov because I was like, "What is this?" Um, Tubov is kind of like a just for our viewers. It's, I mean, I don't even and know. For me, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like um, it in um, I'm forgetting like which period in Jewish history, but. Um, it was a time for finding, um, so like for matchmaking. Um, basically, I think like women would dress in like all white. I I'm totally getting this wrong. So let me just put the link to Chabad. Yeah, don't. I listened don't, to Shir don't once, but I don't take my word for it. But I do know that there's something about dressing in all white. That's a thing. But but just like tuba of is two is like tet bav, which is fifteen of of, which is a which is the Jewish mm -hmm. month. Um, that's usually falls out in July or August right now it's of when we're filming this video in August so um it's it's a few days after Tet of which is Tisha B'Av which is a very sad day on our calendar when the temple was destroyed and all of those things yeah Tubav is this week did you realize yes it's that? this week it's yeah not... it's this week it's this Wednesday I think yeah Ooh. should we get okay. white dresses <laughs> <laughs> okay no we should give people money for ice cream I'll give you here I'll, I'll, Ven I'll Venmo you <laughs> <laughs> I was going to someone's house for Shabbos and I forgot their name and address. That is a huge nightmare. I forget but, people's but, names all the time, so I relate. Like, do you yeah, ever also like you should write it down? Apps? Ever where you're like, shoot, what's their name? I I, I have struck I struggle with it, but uh, oh, so address, yeah, I would write it down. That's no, like I'm like I'm pretty sure this person is saying that they didn't like know how to get there because they didn't have their address and they couldn't ask anyone like oh, oh, oh do you know where this person lives. No, they were going to their house for Shabbos. They oh. weren't there. Wait, so why didn't they just text the person again? How did they how did they coordinate with this person? That's what I'm confused about. Like I like I would understand if on Shabbos you have you ever stayed at someone's house and like you're walking back whether it be a Shabbaton or something and like you don't know where to go at all. Yes, I know, but I think, so, I thought that just so you know, like, a lot of our confessions are from different generations, so it's possible this person didn't even have a phone. Oh, that is a good point. Um, I baked a cake at a family's house, and it was a handwritten recipe in Hebrew, and it came out gross, and one of the oldest daughters said, who made this disgusting cake? <laughs> That's so awkward. Story of my life, like, when you learn how to do something in Hebrew, and, like, you really don't, like, I learned how to play set at Settlers of Catan in Hebrew, and also jungle speed, be like when I've been to various like houses, whether it be like I went on an NCSY program and then I stayed at people's houses and stuff. And, or like when I visited, I literally cannot tell you to this day, the actual rules of Settlers of Catan. I know I put out a piece, I lose the game and that's about it. I was diving to eserate the coattail and a spider got in my hair. So I started patting my head to get it out. And two women next to me started patting my hair to help. So there I was at the coattail dominating and surrounded by people patting my hair. I literally, know someone who has like the same story I don't like this isn't I, I don't think this is that person and I know someone who has like this same story but like I think it was bird poop like something was on her ew <laughs> Ugh. but also one time also in Israel maybe in Israel like I don't know bugs somehow are I think I'm more chill <laughs> about these type people are more chill about these things and then things happen um I was like on some like I was on a I was on a we were trying to like lazy river down the Yarden, um, or like the Jordan River, but like it was like a year of intense drought. So like we kept on like we were just kind of on dirt, 
going down a river on like floaties. It was not comfortable. Um, but basically that trip, like as I got out of the water, I felt this like thing in my shirt. And it was like buzzing. <gasps> And I had a bee in my shirt and I'm standing there alone just being some like, cause I was the only one who got out of the water at the time and I'm standing alone and I'm like, I, I didn't get stung. I've never gotten stung by a bee. I like yell and some like random, like older lady comes and is helping me get a bee out of my shirt. Oh my gosh. That is um, a nightmare. One time I was in a pool and a bee landed on my head when I was like five. I still remember this very distinctly. It landed on my head, but I didn't realize that my head was itchy. So I itched it. And then, um, and then I itched the bee. That was the weirdest. I touched a bee. It was the grossest thing. It no. stung me after that though. So I did get stung by a bee before, but it was, that was like horrible. Like? I always think maybe I just get stung and I don't realize that the sting. Um, no, you feel a sting. It stings. <laughs> That's literally how it feels. It like stings. I was trying to turn my phone off in the middle of a seminary info session with all the heads of the seminary presenting about the school, and I didn't turn it off properly, and instead Siri, Siri started talking really loudly. I just sort of shoved my phone off of me and tried to look inconspicuous. Oh my gosh, that's happened so often. It's such a nightmare, like your phone going off in front of people you're trying to impress. Like, mm -hmm. uh, I always feel such stress because no matter what you do, if you put your phone on do not disturb, it doesn't matter. Your, your alarms will still go off. And I have tons of alarms. So I'm always super stressed that my alarm will go off in the middle of like a super important meeting or something. Oh, it's so, it's so nerve wracking. I even, I hate it. Am I the only person? Like I hate it when my ringtone even rings in stores. Like it makes me nervous to like just have sounds coming from me and like everyone looking like, <laughs> but this is like the worst. It, it happens in class too, just in high school and stuff. I mean, I don't usually have my phone on. I usually turn it off, but like that feeling of like, you're trying to silence your phone. One time the water went out and I had to brush my teeth with a water bottle. Was it my turn? Or... <laughs> no, you read the phone one, so. Oh, I did? Okay, fine. Yeah. Um, that's, like, so, that's, like, such a depressing feeling. Imagine, like, waking up in the morning and, like, taking, like, bottled water and, like, like, <laughs> lugging it. <laughs> one time my bathroom sink broke, so we had to, so I used the shower. Like, I turned on the shower water to brush my teeth. It was... <laughs> really weird. I sometimes, honestly, like if my, one of my sisters is brushing their teeth at the sink, sometimes I'll brush my teeth into the bath, but like, it's weird. No one else, everyone in my family is like, Maya, what are you doing? I just like, I'm very like, get in, get out. Um, but yeah, I feel like this is a classic like seminary moment, like standing in like the bathroom with like, um, I mean, I guess I'm envisioning like camp style, like with a, um, what, what are those spiders called? Daddy long legs on the sink. Like, Ew. I really hope my seminary doesn't have daddy long legs on the sink. I think my seminary is not such an elegant place. I think there will be some. <laughs> <laughs> no, there probably won't be daddy long legs. My father told me about this bug. It's like a cockroach, but they call it something else. And it's like a yeah, juke. Yeah, I forget what they something. call it. I know it. Yeah. A juke, I think they call it. Yeah, a juke. They're disgusting. Uh, disgusting. Yeah. yeah. I've seen them. Ugh. Okay. Um, when we were cleaning for Pesach, we found a potato on the top of the fridge that had started sprouting a full-on tree. Um, Ew. What does it mean to be sprouting a full, like... I think it's a little bit of an exaggeration, but... Like, it just had, like, a really big, like, green thing, like the... What's it called? The green thing coming out? Sign. Out of the a shoe? An eye? I don't know. Well, potatoes have eyes. Um... But they, I don't know, maybe, but I don't know if they're, I don't know if they're green. Or maybe a shoot. You know I don't what, know. Though, you know how sometimes they get long and they're green? I don't know what I'm talking about. But meaning, yeah, it could be sprout, potato sprout thing. So that is a little. That's gnarly. gross. I feel like seminary girls' Pesach time is probably disgusting. Probably. <laughs> like they haven't really cleaned at all the entire year, I feel like. I don't no, know. people clean, just not like to the extent, like, to up to par. Like, right. I remember I visited my sister's dorm and it was like, like, if you looked on a surface level, it looked very clean. When you start talking about whether everyone's sheets were clean, if you start thinking about whether you'd be comfortable sitting on the floor, things like that are a little like iffy. I came up for snacks in between every class. That is such a mood. <laughs> Why don't you just bring snacks with you for the day? 
Yeah, I know. Like, why don't you just pack a bag full of snacks? I mean, I guess if you're in the building, you know what? At least you're getting the exercise going up the stairs in between getting right. It depends. Well, it depends where your dorm is, but it says they went up, so it sounds like even they're... if you went up, they could have had an elevator, but the elevators are usually very slow. Really? How many schools are fancy enough to have an elevator? I know my sisters did, and I know, um, I know another seminary did. It's also a practical. I, I know like three seminaries that definitively have them. It's also a practical matter for like people with special needs. Um, or oh, right. That's true. So, like, I think you're required to have an elevator, but it might be small. Mm-hmm. My cabinet was on a high shelf, so I would eat breakfast standing on a chair to reach my cereal. I literally, I would do that now. Like, I, I feel That's myself- so lazy. Just take it down. No, but then you have to go and you have to put it back up. And especially if you're running out the door type, like you're not, it, it's a whole process. Like seminary isn't the time to like have your whole luxurious, like relaxation morning with like, with like meditation. It's like, I mean, I guess it is. What else are you doing? Like, <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. It's like, it doesn't feel like sitting in like your kitchen with like broken chairs in seminary doesn't doesn't seem like the time you need to have like a luxurious experience. I'm fine just eating and going. Okay, we'll you know what? Eat, each like, their own. I can imagine myself eating like tricks out of a box with a, like, and just. <laughs> great image, Amalia. Great image. <laughs> okay. I should do a whole video of Amalia's cereal eating methods in seminary. <laughs> I actually, I have a video that I made for a friend um, of me just eat, like sh- explaining how I make my cereal cups. Like, I have you made me a cereal cup once. I did? Yes, when I came to your house once, you're like, do you want a cereal cup? And you made it for me. <laughs> I love cereal so much. I would dry my laundry by hanging it all around the room. So, yeah, I did that in, in, um, in when I was in a summer program in Israel also. And I would hang it and I would do my laundry in the sink because I didn't feel like waiting for the available washing, the, like two available washing machines. So I would do it in the sink and then I brought it um, to my room, and I would hang it, and I would hang some stuff on top of, um, I was on the top bunk, so I'd hang some stuff off of my bed, and it would drip down onto my, the person underneath, (laughs) onto her bed, and she didn't care, because she was, I asked her permission, just so everybody knows, I was young, stupid, (laughs) and I asked for permission, (laughs) okay, so she didn't sleep in that bed, like, barely ever, so she didn't care that much, Uh, like, she was, like, I don't know, like, one of those people who, like, runs around and, like, two minutes of sleep like I don't understand how people function like that but she was fine and so I did that and I just feel bad about it now but you know whatever <laughs> ew that is so gross it, the bed was probably like mildewy Hava. I don't know I'm not sure if it actually got onto her bed bed or onto like the floor so she couldn't actually get access to her bed but like it was like her the entire floor was soaking wet whatever <laughs> also like but I had dry clothes hazard <laughs> Yeah, it probably was a safe hit. You know, I was really, really stupid, and I am much older and much more mature now. <laughs> Hopefully. And this is why I know I'm older, seminary, I we will not do that to our roommates. Yes. Amir to Shambly, neither. I only washed my duvet once the whole year. What's a duvet? Um, I th- so, basically, I'm now an expert on duvets because I just got one. I you learned about it on my vlog from the other day. Oh, but basically... Right. It's like, let's say you have like a blank, like a blanket, um, and then, or a duvet insert, and it's kind of like a sheet for your comforter. Um, you take your blanket or, and slash comforter and you put it into it and then you like hook with button, it has buttons along the bottom. And then, um, it, you can like, it's just easier to wash and stuff, um, theoretically than like a comforter is and it dries quicker. So a lot of people use them in seminary. Um, so I've heard. I see. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like it would be so much more stressful to like, you know, when you have to put a pillow in a pillowcase, that's like the hardest part of making a bed for me. Mm-hmm. It like takes ever to get it in. So like, I feel like getting a, you call them comforters. I don't even know. If I call them blankets. Fine. Getting them inside a duvet cover would be really difficult. Well, it is when you first learn then, I mean, I'm still, I'm a spazzy person in general, but like I sort of started getting the hang of it. Like everyone has like a system for doing it. But I think actually, like my sister also, I think said, um, in like to me in person that she changed her duvet cover like infrequently because we didn't use duvet covers at home at that point. 
um, when she went to seminary and she had like no idea how to do it. And like everyone around her like had a system, like you put your arms in it and like you pull the blanket in and then like you kind of put your body inside it and get it over. Um, but she was kind of like still confused by how it works. Um, so she took, just kind of took some liberty with how much you wash it as well. So I think it's actually a kind of co pretty common thing. Also because that's like a whole load. Like I know my seminary, we only, um, we have like kind of like a punch card for, um, for washes. And I think we only get like, maybe it's like two, two a month, um, which is like, so, so like wasting one of those on a, I mean, then you have to pay for it. I guess you could pay and then do more, but like your free ones are that. Um, so like it, wasting on um, that when you have clothes or something you want to do, like, I feel like I could see where people would slip up with it. I'm not judging you. We don't judge any of you. <laughs> okay. Um, I think my friend, I just got a text while we were filming this because um, someone sent me another confession. So Ooh. let's read it. I would rewear the same Shabbos outfit three weeks in a row because I was with different families each weekend. Yeah. You know, that's like a good life hack. Why I, not? I think my seminary even said in their, the packing list, like bring like three Shabbos outfits. So don't, don't overdo it and just rewear. Um, which for me is a little hard. Like I, I do like, like fashion and I like, I like trying new things, but it definitely like, especially like, especially because you're washing your own clothes and you're responsible for the upkeep of like nice items and stuff. Like it's scary to, you also don't have access to dry cleaners as much. So like having a few nice items that you're keeping intact um, does make more sense um, to some extent, I think. So again, no judgment, I, I feel. Although I don't know how much we're gonna be able to do that this year because probably a bunch of our Shabbos are gonna be in Shabbos because we're probably not allowed to go. I mean, I don't know, hopefully people are down to earth enough to accept when I wear an outfit two weeks in a row. <laughs> right, in seminary, yeah. I mean, I suppose you could, like, I suppose, honestly, I feel like where you're going, no one's going to even notice. Yeah, at my stage. seminary, I think, I think they're going to think I'm overdressed most of the time anyway. Like, this <laughs> outfit, they're going <laughs> to, you, you, you all don't know what seminary I'm going to, but I think in my particular seminary, um, it's very, it's known to be very down to earth and, like, this, they'd be like, why are you wearing a Shabbos outfit? Like, <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Not that I know much about your seminary, but I could just imagine. Yeah. Um, okay. This was super fun, guys. We loved hearing your seminary confessions, and we are super nervous now for seminary, and I'm super, really, really hoping that the water does not go out, because that is, like, my biggest nightmare ever. Um, well, not, but it would be a pretty, pretty bad thing. Or a juke, yeah, that, or a bug, yeah please bugs out of my hair, out of my apartments, out of my bathrooms, please. Uh, um, but I'm super excited to go and I'm sure Molly is super excited to go too. And we'll see you guys next week. So hope you guys- And we'll see you on the seminary journey. <laughs> yeah. And oh wait, and comment down below if you guys have any more seminary confessions or if you have other confessions that you guys want us to put in the videos, just let us know down below and we'll see you next week.